Hello there. The public appears to be changing its mind over fracking in the UK. Or were we lied to when we were told it was so unpopular? Yes, either we were lied to about the unpopularity of fracking in the UK in order to meet the green agenda, or else the public has changed its mind. Because a new Savanta Comres poll tells us that 44% of people in the UK are now in favour of fracking, 36% are opposed and 20% are unsure. And this is in the face of an endless torrent of anti-fracking information that is thrown at us to try and keep us from exploiting our own UK resources, with many people saying that Russia has been behind some of this anti-fracking pressure so as to consolidate its own dominance in the sector. But as we're always told that the Russians are behind all nefarious activity, then who knows? Now, if fracking can be done safely here in the UK, then it will be a cleaner option than shipping it in from around the world. No need for large liquefied natural gas ships to burn fuel bringing it from the Far East or America. No need to expend loads of energy compressing the gas to get it in the LNG carrier and then decompressing it when it gets here. And we can regulate fracking activity here in the UK to keep it safe and clean. Now, much of the support for fracking shown by this poll may be based on people worrying about the price of gas and the cost of living crisis we're going through. But unless the government were to nationalise gas supplies in some way and then control the price, we will still be tied to global gas prices. All that we will have is a guaranteed supply of gas at extremely high prices, instead of the potential for no gas if someone else switches off our supplies. The Department for Business Energy and Industrial Strategy, or BEIS, has commissioned a review into whether the current fracking moratorium can be lifted, and just recently the energy company Quadrilla was given a temporary stay of a year on permanently capping two potential fracking fields. The government's new British energy security strategy will see a five-fold increase in solar power from 14 gigawatts to 70 gigawatts by 2035, offshore wind power boosted from 11 gigawatts to 50 gigawatts by 2030, nuclear power increased from 6.9 gigawatts to 24 gigawatts by 2050, increasing hydrogen to 10 gigawatts. And the BEIS has also said that we could see 95% of UK electricity being low carbon by 2030. But right now we need gas and oil to see us through to this transition, if it ever comes to fruition. Now the government put out a report a while back called Energy Consumption in the UK 1970-2020. to And back in 1970, industry was the big energy sink as you can see from this graph from the report, followed by domestic use, then transport, and then services in that order. But by 2020, that had all changed. Transport is now the biggest energy user. Even though our pandemic responses hammered transport use in 2020. That's followed by domestic use, then industry and services almost tying for third and fourth places. But a lot of the energy consumption associated with industry will have been offshored to places like China in the last five decades. If we hadn't outsourced that energy use, it would be much higher. So if the UK is looking to beef up home production, then there will be a significant uplift in that sector of energy use into the future. And I wonder how long before data storage facilities get their own energy line. But it's the transport energy use that will have to be borne by renewables once the net zero pushers have got us off of fossil fuel powered cars in the next decade or so. But will we have enough batteries? <laughs>